So, you've got a big tank, or you're thinking about getting a big tank, and you're worried about how you're actually going to do water changes on it without lugging buckets back and forth, back and forth, and exhausting yourself. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do really simple water changes, or how I do them on my big tank behind me. So stay tuned. It's all about shrimps, simply shrimps. Before we actually start taking the water out, I tend to do a few bits of maintenance first. The first one being a bit of algae wiping. That way any algae that I actually scrape off is going to be in the water column and some of it's actually going to get sucked out, so it's good to get rid of it that way. Another thing I do, and you might want to do as well, is make sure that any pumps but can't perform well uh, when the water level drops, to turn them off. Now because I've got two pumps or two filters on this tank, one of them has a surface skimmer on it so it tends to gurgle and suck in a lot of air when the water level drops, I'll be turning that one off. But the other filter, the Fluval FX6, that one works completely fine when the water level drops a bit, so I'm going to be leaving that one on. Which is good because it will still provide some sort of water movement for the fish when the whole process is taking place. If you've got any trimming of plants you need to do, or any other sort of little bits of maintenance that's going to create floating debris in the water, then go ahead and do that now. But normally I don't really do that because there's not many plants in here, and the plants that are in there, the fish are nibbling anyway, so I might get rid of them, but shh. Now all the little bits of maintenance are done, we're actually going to get on and do the water change. Now for this you're going to need a siphon with a fair length of hose on it. I keep my siphon underneath my fish tank. I then put the siphoning end into the fish tank and thread the rest of the hosing out of the window. I'll quickly go outside and just position the outlet hose in a secure location. All the way back inside again and it's time to start the siphon. Now most siphon kits actually have a valve inside of them which allow you to start the siphon by moving it up and down in the water a few times. Because of the extra length of hose, this takes a little bit more work for me than you would if you were just siphoning it into a bucket on the floor. Now that the siphon's started, I go back outside and I tend to make use of the wastewater watering the plants and things in the garden. If you don't have a garden or anything to water, then literally just put it down the drain but I like to use the, the nutrient rich water with all the fish waste in it to actually water things and help promote healthy growth. Just be aware if you are outside doing this that you still head back in every now and then just to keep an eye on your water level. If you do have an excess amount of waste in the tank then be sure to suck up those bits with a siphon end within the tank. Because I've got quite a high flow rate in my filter and quite a lot of bottom dwellers which kick up a lot of waste, most of it gets sucked out through the filter so I don't need to worry about this too much and I just let it drain on its own accord. I have actually put a little mark on my fish tank to represent about 25-30% of the water and I do tend to stick the magnetic algae scraper so I can see when the water gets to that level, I need to take the siphon out. It generally takes about 15 to 20 minutes to drain the correct amount of water on my tank out. Okie dokie, now the water's drained out to the correct level, it's time to take the siphon out and begin the process of filling up the tank. So because of the large volume of water in my tank, it's about 500 litres, I actually use a pond dechlorinator because I find it works out more cost effective and it tends to be a higher concentration as well. Dosing recommendations, now say I've taken, oh gosh, I don't know, 150 litres out of the tank, then I'm not actually going to be treating the dechlorination amount for, say, 150 litres. I'm actually going to be treating it for the full 500 litres of my tank. Now here's the pro of actually keeping one of the filters on. When I add the dechlorinator to the tank, it does actually help it mix in. In the dechlorinator goes, and I tend to leave it now about another 5-10 minutes for it to fully circulate around the tank and everything has a chance to uh, get mixed in properly. It is now time to fill up the tank! And for that, you're going to need a hose pipe. It's almost the exact reverse of draining the tank out. So instead of having a hose taking water out, you're having a hose putting water in. So I attach that to the hose fitting outside and just make sure you've got a long enough hose to fit between your outside tap or even if you've got an indoor hose fitting and your fish tank. I'll turn that on and then I'll put the other end in my fish tank and secure it tightly. 
The good thing about most hose end fittings is the fact that they have a switch or something which allows you to keep the water flowing on. And now it's just a waiting game again really. Just make sure whatever you do, do not leave the room. As I've made this mistake once, I was actually upstairs editing another video and I got this shout from downstairs, come down quick the fish tank's overflowing. So that was a bit of a schoolboy error on my behalf and I quickly sprinted downstairs and turned it off. So just make sure you're within the vicinity and you know what level the tank is getting to. I also happen to know that it takes about the same amount of time to drain as it does to fill up, so about another 15-20 minutes. If I do go away, I'll only go away for 5-10 minutes and then come back and I know it won't have filled up. So just relax and observe your fish, make sure everything's alright. One thing you do need to be careful about this method is in the winter time the water can be quite cooler. If you have got an inside tap fitting and you can control the hot and cold water, it's best to probably do something like that over the winter time. However, I have done this throughout the heart of winter and coming into summer now, as this tank is only about 8 months old and the water temperature fluctuations has not really dropped any more than 2 degrees Celsius from when I've taken the water out to put it back in. So say it's set at 26 degrees, it won't really drop any less than 24 degrees, which is still kind of acceptable. I think I was once told that any more than 3 degrees Celsius of a change can actually stress the fish out quite a lot. Anything less than th like 3 or below and the fish should be fine. It's not too stressful on them. But just be aware of that whole scenario. And we're pretty much there everyone. So now the tank is completely filled up. You've made sure that you haven't overfilled it as I did that one time as I said. Whoops! It's now just a case of tidying up after yourself and sitting back and enjoying your fish. So there you have it, how to do a water change on a big fish tank. If you have any other ways you do water changes on your big fish tanks, then let us all know in the comments section below. As always, if you did like this video, whack that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more shrimpy and fishy content coming out soon. And I shall see you in another video. See you later. It's all about shrimps, simply shrimps. Let's keep things shrimple, simply shrimps. Do 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 do. Yeah!